Oh, yo. All right. Tell me. The Curse of the Lottery, brought to you by Snow Cone, presented by myself, and uh, presented to Laszlo. Laszlo, the Mega Millions and Powerball jackpots are at a combined one point something billion. Mm. So people have lottery fever, right? Sure. I saw for one of them, I, I think they said Powerball, your chances of winning were like one in 294 million, something like that. Yeah, right? But that when, when the jackpots get this high, that's when people start to really get also, excited. Also, you know, your chance is zero if you don't have a ticket. That's exactly right. I do know that. 100% no chance you can win it that I can think of if you don't have a ticket. That's it. Someone around you doesn't have a ticket that you can steal. You're going to have to get a ticket at least. So these are, we've heard the curse of the lottery. A lot of people believe that it's a real thing. A lot of people's lives on that show... Uh, I think it was a TLC show. They would ask the, a lot of those people that were still around, you know, did you, do you wish you had won the lottery? Are you happy you won it or not? And I was always surprised at how many people would say, I wish I'd never won the lottery because all the friends that I had before, some of them lifelong friends, I stopped talking to because like they ask for money. I give them some money. It's not enough. You gave this person more. People get mad at you. Sure. Uh, and so you lose all those friendships. You don't know who to trust anymore. Your new friends are people that are probably right. just looking for your money. I think possibly one of the worst examples is Jack Whitaker. And you may have heard this story somewhere before. I've heard of him. I think you really probably have seen this story on some show, I some mean, investigation discovery thing. You probably dated him, yeah. Or you guys went to the strip club together at the very least. Because he, he was he was known to do that. So Jack was rich on his own. He was a contractor. Mm -hmm. He was already worth, I think they said something like $17 million he's reported to have been worth. But he wins the lottery. And at the time, I think it was the largest jackpot ever awarded. It was $315 million. Mm -hmm. So Artie Ward, $17 million, Artie, very rich guy, wins $315 million. He decides that uh, he's going to take the lump sum, which is $113 million. That's not a bad lump sum. So mm -hmm. $113 million is what he gets to take home. Now, Jack was a very generous person with his money. He was uh, the kind of guy that if you asked him for money, he was probably better than... 50% chance I'd say that he's going to give it to you. Like the woman who sold him the ticket at the gas station. He, sure. He bought her a car and a house and I think oh, some other nice. stuff. Like, yeah, he went out of his way. And he gave people and his family money. And then he also started these like charities. I know he pledged 10% of his winnings to some Christian charities thing. And it was like in the state of West Virginia, right? That's West right. Virginia yep. Christian Charities. Mm -hmm. uh, he donated... 14 million to set up the Jack Whitaker Foundation, and that provided food and clothing to low-income families in West Virginia. And it, so he was just a gregarious guy, right? Gave people money, and he was social and and happy to help out. He also had an issue with wanting to carry a lot of cash on him, yeah, on his person, yeah, like in a car. So one night he was it at got a stolen, right? Several times. One time he was at a strip club. Thieves broke into his car. They stole a suitcase from his car that had $545,000 in cash in the suitcase. Of course, the cops ask him, why did you carry that much money? Why did you have all that money on you? And he said, because I can. It was just that simple. He didn't really have an answer. I guess he's just like, I have $545,000 in cash in a suitcase. I'll carry it if I want to. Is that against the law, by the way? It's not, right? No. You can't get so. it on an airplane, but you're allowed to. If you get pulled over and have half a million dollars in cash, I'm sure they're going to want to ask you some follow-up questions, but I don't think you're breaking any laws. So he gets a $545,000 stolen out of his car at the strip club. Then in another incident, the general manager and a dancer at that same strip club were arrested and charged with conspiring to put drugs in his drink and then rob him. So this is a place that I assume he frequents. He's a good customer. He tips sure. the dancers well. The general manager should be happy to see him. Instead, the general manager conspires with the dancer to drug this guy because they think he's got all this cash probably out in his car. You know, we could go steal it. Now, there was another time that someone broke into his car and they made off with $200,000. This separate issue here. Uh, but I guess that money was somehow recovered. Cops found them and got that money back. So at the same time that this is all going on, cash is being stolen. He's at the strip club. His company, that company that had already made him a millionaire, this general contracting company, started getting all these frivolous lawsuits. They were getting hit left and right because people were sure. after his money. So he had to spend millions of dollars in legal fees trying to keep his business open and, and fight these allegations. Now, he also had a granddaughter named Brandy. Yeah. And this is the story that I remember seeing stuff about. And I don't know what the show was, but Brandy, I guess, was kind of his favorite. He gave her a lot of money. He bought her, I think, four different cars. Uh, but all this wealth that she had kind of maybe backfired in the sense that it attracted a, a bad crowd. On September 16th, 2004, she had this boyfriend named Jesse. He was like an on-again, off-again boyfriend. And he was found dead at one of Jack's homes in West Virginia. He had several properties. And I got it that this was the place that she stayed. This was basically like 
her right. house. Yeah. But so her on again, off again boyfriend is found dead there. The coroner's report says that he died from overdosing, a combination of oxycodone, she died. Demerol. She died later. I was going to get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. He dies from oxycodone, Demerol, methadone, and cocaine. And then just three months later, Brandy's found dead on the same property. Uh, or wait, maybe it was a different, different property. property. It friend's was a different house. property. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was at a friend's house when she died. But she'd been reported missing like a week before that's right. they found out that she was mm -hmm. dead there. Her body was wrapped in plastic. They dumped her behind a, a junked van. Like this, I mean, this isn't like she overdosed and nobody found her for a while. Someone was trying to mm -hmm. harm her, it looked like, and, and hide her body. They said cocaine and methadone were found in her system, but the cause of her death was ruled to be undetermined, and no one was ever charged with the crime. So during all this, now he's lost his granddaughter. Man. She's wrapped up in a sheet of plastic. This is after her boyfriend had died from an overdose. He's got this wife that he's been with since he was 14 years old. They've been married for 40-some years. Uh, they're not doing so well. Their relationship's starting to unravel. You know, he, he drinks a lot. He spends a lot of time at the strip club. Apparently, he also liked to fight. He gets, you know... He can defend himself. I he like can hire this guy. Of course. And he also liked to get a little handsy with women sometimes, maybe offer them money to sleep with them, take oh, off their clothes, animal. things like that. But it, my thing is, if he's doing that at a strip club, I, you know, I don't That's know. That's what you're supposed if to do. If he's doing it at yeah, Walmart, whatever. then it's a problem, right? But I don't know where he was doing it. They just say that the, at, at this point, there was a lot of million dollars and you're in Walmart, you can do whatever you, you want. Can, I think you can, yeah. <laughs> Literally, so, you can be like, I'll just, well, I'll just buy this entire store. <laughs> things aren't going well with his wife. I guess she's not happy about this stuff. And then he gets popped for a DUI, and it seems like that was kind of one of the last straws Man. there. He gets the DUI. Wives hate that. And then he gets sued by Caesars Casino in Atlantic City for bouncing $1.5 million worth of checks that were supposed to cover gambling fees. And then in 2007, his 42-year-old daughter, which was Brandy's mom, by the way, found dead. Mm. Yeah, so now the boyfriend dies, Brandy dies, and now Brandy's mother is dead, which is his daughter. In 2008, his wife finally divorces him after uh, 42 years. He gets dragged into this really ugly... Uh, you know, lengthy dispute about money, I'm sure, and sure. everything else. And uh, then, as if things weren't bad enough after she leaves, his home in West Virginia burns to the ground. He mm. says he forgot to get insurance for it, wasn't insured. It happens. And he dies on June 27th, 2020. I mean, his life completely unraveled once he won that money. It was about, what, like a 17, what year did he win it? It was like early 2000s, right? Now he's dead. You have to have money to exist in this world, but money money doesn't rule the world money money is not what makes people happy you know family is what is dear and now you've lost your granddaughter you're about to be divorced from your wife where does this ever end well i don't know where it'll end but you know i just i, I don't like jack whittaker i don't like what i don't like the hard heart jack i've got uh, who's become i just don't like what i've become I pretty much lost everything I held dear in my life. I feel bad for Jack. You know, he had $115 million in cash that he had, plus the $17 million he was already worth. No, well, he and didn't lose all of it, right? Couldn't, couldn't buy him happiness. No, but he, he lost his granddaughter, his daughter, his wife. He's talking about, you know, mm. the money didn't buy happiness. It's family. Mm. But it seems like he learned that lesson the hard way after everyone well, is gone. Well, I mean, gone. his daughter and granddaughter dying is tragic, but that yeah. happens to people. It does. And it also yeah. happens to people who aren't doing that money. True. They definitely tried to make it seem like the people that were around his granddaughter were around her trying to get to her money, mm. and that there were a lot of people out trying to get his money, trying to get the family's money, and that that's why, like, that that's how her boyfriend came around in the first place was that, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the way they tried to portray it. Look, I understand that when you win a lot of money, people come after you. They'll start writing you letters and just asking, can I have some money? I've got a sick kid or whatever. We hear about lottery winners getting those letters. While you were talking about this, I would already written an email to Jack until I found out he died. Yeah, he died. So you're like, yo. Write it to his wife. She might AC's still be alive. Out, right, right, right. <laughs> right. That's it. Just the AC. Well, come on. I've man. never been to a strip club. Hate the place. I love the strip club. I don't can't pay for the AC because I go to the strip club all the goddamn time. You get it. Don't, don't tell yeah, him. You got to custom the letter to the person. Yeah, I get it. You know, he's going to be more apt to, you know, throw you some money when you tell him you're doing that stuff. Well, uh, the begging for money thing, okay. The, the friends coming up and wanting money, I, you know, it seems odd. I, you would hope that your friends wouldn't do that, but it seems like they all do, so I don't know. But the thing I don't understand is taking it so far as to kill someone, which does happen in some of these stories. And the craziest one, I think, is Abraham Shakespeare. This is another guy you've probably oh, seen stuff about. Abe. Yep. Old Abe Shakespeare. 2006. He is a high school dropout and a convicted convict. Uh, he couldn't like read. He couldn't read. 
He won $40 million in the Florida lottery. Nice. Now, the trouble started immediately for Abe because when he went to buy this ticket, the story that I heard was that he told his coworker, hey, he gave him cash, go in there and buy me a lottery ticket. The coworker comes back, gives him a lottery ticket. So, of course, because he won the $40 million, the coworker tries to say, hey, that was my lottery ticket, or we were supposed to split that lottery ticket. But he, he accuses him of stealing it. So he takes him to court. He takes Abe to court. He Abe ends up winning the case, but that's just the beginning of his problems. And again, that happened like as soon as he won. He meets this woman named Dee Dee Moore. Uh, she says that she wanted to write about his experience and help him manage his money. Because at this point, he was also a really generous guy. Gave out gave, tons, gave out of, tons money. of money. He, like he had a friend who was a barber, I think, and needed help, a uh, mm -hmm. business loan, and was mm -hmm. talking about how expensive the interest and was. And he's asked, like, hey, basically. I'll just, I'll just yeah. give you the money, and then you can pay me back. Which that guy I've actually seen, the, the barbershop owner, he still does interviews sometimes and says, I, I, you know, like I was actually paying him back. I wasn't just going to take the money. But he gave a lot of people money, just like Jack did. And so this woman comes along, and she says, listen, I want to write about your experiences, and I would like to help you manage your money. So he's like, okay. So he, he agrees. Come write about me, and you can help me manage my money. Now, surprise, surprise, Dee Dee immediately starts spending his money on herself. She buys herself a Hummer. Uh, she bought herself a Corvette. She, somehow she got his home to be in her name. Like, she took possession of the home, and I, is, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched that thing about him, but I think... Could he, like, not even get into his own home? Or somehow she ended up with the house. Yeah, she has, like, possession she, of the house. She had possession yeah. of, of the home at one point. And she's already bought these cars, which are pretty flashy vehicles that you'd think he'd notice she didn't buy until after they met. But he asked her about it, and uh, she, you know, claims everything's on the up and up. Look, I'm a financial investor and an author and all this stuff. It's going to mm -hmm. be okay. You're giving too much money out. She was putting together a list of people that owed him money and saying, we, we need to go start collecting this. Now, it seems like looking back that the truth is by the time she was putting those lists together, it might be because she had spent all of his money. And I have a feeling just from the stuff that I've read that she runs out of money and she's like, all right, how can we be out of money already? Who owes you money? And that's when she finally is like, we should put this list together and go find these people who owe you money. They should really get, and then of course you go to talk to these people and I'm sure they quickly realized that they're not gonna get this money back. So um, what does she do? People are suspicious of her a little bit. The right. money's disappearing. He's got some questions that she doesn't have good answers for, so she kills him. She kills Abe. Seems reasonable. Buries his body under con concrete slabs at her boyfriend's house. Mm. Um, you know, she went to all this work to, to try and make it look like he was still alive after he died. She's sending texts from his phone. You know, that old thing. Smart. Yep. Uh, talking like to family members like, oh, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, I'm just out clearing my head. You know, seeing how much time you can buy. I guess if they do ever find the body, you're hoping they don't. But if they do, that it throws off the investigation. Well, when did he die? Well, she was right. gone, you know, whatever. But she's she just, she just she's one of these people who cannot deal with the problem that's in front of her. So what she keeps it? making it worse and worse. Well, the problem at first was she didn't have any money, so she decides she's going to take advantage of this Seemed guy. Seemed like she figured but that then out. she goes through his money fast, and she doesn't have any mm. reasons for why the money's gone or why she owns these cars. She doesn't have good answers for him. Or like, hey, what was this plan about managing my money? I thought we were going to do something here. And family members are like, who is this woman? And why is she driving these cars all of a sudden? Like, Abe, she's taking advantage of you. At this point... She does the old thing where she turns him against everyone else. Hey, they're the ones who took advantage of yeah. you. You can't trust any of your friends or family. They all just asked you for money. You've already given them money. Yeah. Nothing's going to be good enough for them. So she, she isolates him, and then she ends up killing him, putting him under a concrete slab, texting friends and family from Abe's phone so that you know she can pretend like he's alive. When she's finally arrested, she made up several versions of events that led to his death. Um, you got the Do audio? I think that you're a cold-blooded killer? No, I, I hope you're not a cold-blooded killer. I have not killed him. I hope he's not even dead. He's not. Moore gave a wide variety of excuses why Abraham Shakespeare disappeared. Because he wanted to pretend that he was dying of AIDS so that he doesn't have to pay child support and people won't look for him if he's dying of AIDS. Then there was the blackmail excuse. That's a good it was a videotape. Uh, Believe me, you thought about it too, Snow Cone, right? Then came the tears. Every my month, family's being affected. Look, my mom's got like, heart man. problems. She's over my house right now cleaning for Thanksgiving. They were, my own parents were scared to come to my house for Thanksgiving. One detective told the jury Moore even made a pass at him after the interrogation. She actually came toward me and she said she that I wasn't going to get angry, that I was going to have sex with her. Yeah, that's she fair. She said she was very attracted to me. You can't say angry at me. I've got a Hummer. Clear that I would pursue a relationship with yeah. her. 
I tried that when the lady cop pulled me over. It didn't work. Yep. I was like, come here, baby girl. I think they're supposed to try it with you. Why don't you let me off? Why don't you let me off this ticket? I'll give you a little kiss, kiss. <laughs> And then she's like, you imagine Only guys trying that with women. Yeah, I've heard stories about it happening. I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> I can't imagine it ever works. I wouldn't think so. I'm surprised that it ever works for me. That's how ever. powerful women are. Yes. They literally are. Like, I know you saw there's this big disadvantage between men and women. And there sure. are, like, but women. There are some advantages. You hold the ultimate power and you know it. And, and you use it. Our weak minds. You're like, hey, uh, as soon as a cop pulls you over, you start talking different. Yep. It's the, you know. It's, it's, it's the vagina. It's You have one. It's horny. And it There's a limited runs. amount of them. Yep. And, uh, like, um, you know, people really want them. And even more limited to the number of women that have talked to me in a flirtatious matter right. my entire that. life. You know, there's and a now limited here you amount are. of vaginas. Right. Now here we are, and you're flirting with me in your car window, and I know that what you want is out of this ticket. What I want is this attention and maybe a little more. And there's a lot of demand you. for a vagina. What are you going to do? Say no? Well, you, have a, you, have a, you, have, you have the supply. You actually have an unlimited supply because you have one. The only reason this cop you didn't sleep it. with Dee Dee is because they were videotaping these of interrogations. Of course, would have thought about if it. If this were before videotapes, trust me, she would be off and they'd be like, why didn't she ever get arrested? We don't know. They just didn't have an, enough evidence. Well, he'd be like, no, be like, because we got a text message from him and he's, uh, <laughs> he's alive. Yeah. He didn't want to talk to you. Yeah, he had AIDS and just leave right. him alone. He had AIDS right? and he hates his kids, whatever. His business, he's the lotto winner, right? And then that guy, they're like, why is the cop driving around in a Hummer? <laughs> right. I mean, that's it, right? That's it. That's how it goes down if those cameras aren't on, I promise you. Absolutely. But because of the cameras... Ladies, congratulations. She was convicted of first-degree murder. won the genetic lotto with that vagina of yours. (laughs) Man. That's good, huh? Are we done? That's it. All right. Well, good show. Abe Shakespeare, Jack Whitaker, and whoever else. Stay positive, kids. Nice recall. First and last on both of them. That was good, yeah. What are we at, son? Time. 17 under. Perfect. Now give me some Demerol, Snow Cone. All this talk about Demerol. It's got me scratching my neck. Did you bring that bottle back up? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to take it home and try it. Especially if it's hot in my house, just to sleep. Thanks, mister. Hey, Swim, what day do you think for that author? Friday, if we can, right? Or Saturday morning? I don't know. What's the schedule like this week? Yeah, Lazo, what's your schedule like on Friday? I don't know yet. Why? What's up? We've got an author trying to get on the podcast. I mean, we could set a time for... When did we... We did that one, uh, what was it, like 9 a.m., 10 a.m.? And that way everyone was available. Did they respond already? Are you looking for a... No, she responded. Okay. Is it... Sh- I just wasn't shield- the baseball schedule is before. It the I, she asked what day, what time is good. So. Is it the shielded lady? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind looking at the schedule so I can get Yeah, that, I just don't know if they've uh, released it schedule. for... Nico's done. But, and I think John's last one. But they haven't released the schedule yet. So can I let you know as soon as they do, like tomorrow or something? Yeah, that sounds good.
Snowco, have you seen this video of a woman regaining consciousness at her wake? No. Is what? What? This uh, it's on the New York Post. It dead, wasn't the African one, right? Dead woman wakes up. No, this is Ecuador. Uh, Moore's uh, Ecuador wake or uh, stunned after the dead relative began banging on the inside of the coffin. Dude, her mouth, one in Africa with her the mouth comes is open. On it. Oh my God, dude, this is. Hold on, I'm coming to watch. 76 regained consciousness during the vigil. Just hours after a medical examiner provided her son with a death certificate. She's in a coffin. All right, you ready? This is an image that will haunt you. I mean, are you looking at her? Or were you reading that? Hmm. I don't know. I don't buy it. Look at her. Look at her face. Well, you think she's? You think someone's pulling the string back there behind her neck? I mean, that no. guy is pushing on the back of her neck. He could be making her mouth open, you know? Should be in on it. I don't know. When are we going on vacation? You just told me. Uh, is it next week? Yeah, the 24th, right? Didn't you tell them 23rd through, is that right? 23rd through 30th or something? Yes, yeah, the last week of July, which is next week, right? July, well, is that this week? What's the date today? Today's the 17th. I think we said the, the 23rd through something. Which is Friday? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got it right here. Uh, 721 through 728. That's Friday okay. through Friday. Okay. So when, what, what date does it start? So Thursday Friday be the last Friday. day, Friday. Oh, this Friday. This Friday. So we're off this Friday, right? I guess. Yeah, so this Friday we're off until right. That's right. Monday so the 31st. Not, that, not next week, it's, but this week is when it starts, right? I guess if it starts on we're Friday. off Friday. Okay. So that with the author now, too. Oh, God. So we need to do Thursday for her? Yeah. What time? Well, I'll wait for a while so tell me the yeah. schedule. Well, early will be fine. Early is good? Yeah, for sure. Is that like 10 a.m.? Yeah, 10 or 11, yeah, it should be fine. And then we're off Friday, right? That's mm -hmm. what I was making sure. Because when you see Friday, it's like, oh, am I a week off? Or... Let's do 11. That's early enough to get it over with and then get the show done. You finished the book? No, I'm only like halfway through it, but I can finish it if she's coming on. What is it? Uh, shielded, how police became untouchable. How mm -hmm. cops in America became untouchable. Certainly not the commissioner of Detroit.
What time do you want to do tomorrow? Does it matter? Mm. Would you rather do early, late, whatever? Whatever you want. And really, it's up to you guys. <coughs> we can come in earlier. You want to do noon? Sure. Just let us know. But also, he has to start without me. Like the laptop here and everything. Oh boy, I don't know about that. You can do it without me. I know you can. I, I don't. Believe. I don't feel comfortable. I believe in you. You feel comfortable doing it without me? No. Snow Cone's got band practice tomorrow. He's getting the band back together. Yeah. They got a new name, though. Really? What is the new name? Marcus Mariota's Hot Wife? Is that what it's called? What was the name of the old band? I don't remember. Free Lost yeah. World. Free Lost World? Lost World Free. <laughs> I'm not reminding you. Just say it. What was it? Feel Bad Lost. Feel Good s Slow. Fuck you, Chris. It's feel good lost. That's it. Feel good lost.
All right, what are we doing? Are we done here? Twitch, you got any questions for me? I'll answer any questions. I got like four minutes. Let's go. Want to get in a hot tub? You want to jack each other off? What do you guys want to do? Huh, Slim? Too hot for a hot tub. Too hot to jack each other off? I haven't talked to the pool guy now, sorry. Some says it's too hot for a hot tub. I'm a random number type of guy. Smoking a cigar. Suck it on a chili dog. My phone died. That's my cue. Gotta go, kids. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Good night, Slimmy. Good night, Slimmy. See you guys tomorrow.